the sacrament of feet washing, the sacrament of holy communion. Those are the sacraments that are used in the Church of God in Christ and are instituted by Jesus Christ. That's why we don't have a lot of other sacraments, so-called sacraments, that another Reformation has because we they were not given to us by the Lord, so Bishop Mason did this. Now the sacramental linens and the sacramental parents are come to us through other reformations because you know we just only we just basically only been here a hundred years. So some of this stuff is set up by other reformations. The
most of you have a pyramid set. And we're telling you this because we don't want our people to call things. And, and one of the adjutants told me to tell you this. First of all, tell them to, tell them to don't call them these things. That's right. Each thing has a name. That's right. And if we are representative of the adjutant, the uh, presiding bishop's office, then we want to know exactly what it is to be called because we're representing him. And then we're going to be correct in what we do. So those are all the linens. These are, and when you have the one, you know, like you have mostly, most of you just got uh, all the, the communion tables. You have the, the, the ones that are red on one side, white on the other side. Okay, and then the green on one side and purple on the other side. And that, that's all you need. You know, everybody doesn't have you know, big stuff like this. So you, you, but whatever you have, saints, ladies, please make it beautiful because our Lord deserves. So, and most of the time, the women are the ones who have the job of making things beautiful. Families have to watch after our souls. So it's up to the women to take care of things like this. All right, we've gotten over the pyramids and altar linens. Then we have some other linens that are sacrificial linen. And then we've got these on the table. For those of you who use sacramental linens. Mother. <coughs> yes. Uh, before you go there, mm -hmm. as far as uh, dusting, mm -hmm. The dusting or cleaning of those linings that you just mentioned, how do they go about as far as cleaning or dusting? Do you speak with your stand and speak loud? Yeah, it's okay. It's I, I was asking the question about the cleaning and the dusting of you know, <laughs> handling the, the linings that set on the altar. Okay. This on a weekly basis, you know, it's just to be dusted off. Amen. You don't know, shake it, the dust off it. But when it really needs cleaning, you have to, this has to be professionally dry cleaned. You cannot be washed. <coughs> this is brocaded, and you cannot wash it. This is linen, so it can be washed and ironed by your deaconess or your mother's boys or whatever. But do not put it in the washing machine with anything else. These sacred linens go in by themselves. And you clean the washing machine out. Let it do a run before you put the sacred cloths in it. Did that answer your question? Yes, ma'am. All right. Then we go to the sacramental. <coughs> Number one is uh, this. If you just hold it up for me, the corporal. Right over that center. 
Santa Cross. Yes, sir. Uh, Mother Miller, uh, customarily, do you know whether uh, some of the bishops use the chalice with intention uh, when serving communion? The uh, inside the chalice, the uh, inner laid cup in which the uh, holy uh, wafer is rests by intention. Because well, the bishop's uh, chalice was ordered, there was not an intention. Uh, that's because to, normally the Church of God in Christ does not use the intention. That's Catholicism. <coughs> they do that in Catholicism. Because once, of course, a lot of them don't, don't particularly like to use um, the communion sharing and then wiping with the purificator. Mm -hmm, I understand. You and you follow me. Because I've asked that question already. I'm in They'd rather not use the purificator to wipe after each mm -hmm. certain. Yeah, well, those that do, that's fine. You know. But the rest of us, you know, and I was going to recommend to uh, the, our chief adjutant that they put a little bit of uh, something on that uh, purificator to, to do, because I wouldn't want to, if I was doing it, I'd have to be first. <coughs> <laughs> He's not finished yet. He's coming back. 
so you don't bother the napkin. So when these two disciples who didn't believe what the woman, who doubted what the woman had said, went running to the tomb, when they saw that napkin folded and laying over in a place by itself, they knew, you know, the Bible said when they saw it, then they believed. They knew <clears throat> that this meant that he is alive and he is coming back because the folding napkin means that he's not finished yet. So, if you keep this in mind, so this is what another one of the most sacred of the sacramental lineage. We keep it in a place where we need it. And then that's the last thing that after we take them, the body and the blood away, then that napkin is folded and put aside by itself. The Paul just brings it up. Yes. I'm trying to find him. That was back to what I told you. <laughs> okay, this is a Paul. This is a Paul. And, you know, they don't like for us to bother for you to bother stuff. If they search, people will bring it down and, and mm -hmm. get it to you and be, you know, responsible for it. So I don't advocate that we start moving certain stuff around unless somebody knows that we're doing The Paul. Okay, the Paul is used to cover the chalice before and after communion. All right, the purificators. No, you don't have to take it. The purificators, that's what he was talking about. The jewel. You take a sip and then you take it. So that's going to be used too. That's another part of it. Then the veil. That's called a communion veil. You can think of it plain white linen. That's to cover the chalice, and we're going to cover it in the tabernacle. Okay. Then the verse. And that's you know, what we carry the veil in. Now, you won't have all of this, but since a lot of us are doing it, some of your bishops, you know, if you're in a bishop's shows, a lot of times they do this. But I want you to know everything that, that is pertaining to this because when the time comes, you will know it. And once you get it in here, nobody can take it from you. Amen. All right. We're going to talk about the sacred vessels. The sacred vessels that we use in the Church of God in Christ are the chalice and the pad. Larger that would hold that bubble. 
The sacred ceremonies, what I call high church, we use those. And if you don't have them in your church, that's fine. Ladies, it's not your church anyhow. Amen. The pastor, Amen. the pastor is the leader. And if he doesn't want any of this done in the church, then we're not going to sweat it. We're going to polish up that silver, that silver or gold color tray, and we're going to make it as beautiful, that service as beautiful as the one where this is. And there's several ways that you can vest the chalice and the, and, you know, tabernacle. So this is not a hard and fast rule, but we have to put something, we can't put everything in the book. We just give you some examples, and there are other ways to, that you can vest the chalice. So, <coughs> um, okay, we are, we're gonna vest the chalice now. <coughs> Keep in mind that the corporal is supposed to be under the chalice. We're improvising because. And you don't feel the, the you see, you just put a little bit there, you don't feel the cup up. Because if we were serving wine, if we feel that cup up. <laughs> Serve them, and that's what you used to call uh, serve from the 
chalice. Get ready and they go. Show them how it's done. You can or kind of, it's a personal preference. Even saying that you have the women to, to move that. Some people do, some do, and some do not, so it's a personal preference. But you have to do it carefully. You see how it's lifted and carefully, so you won't just pull the ball off and let it. Y'all blocking it so the people can't see it. Y'all blocking it. Body which was broken for you. Take eat of it. Oh, and the chalice. Don't put it on your lips. This is my blood that was shed for you. Take drink of it. Often as you do this, you do this in remembrance of me. Take, drink all of it. Drink it. <laughs> So 
I didn't say anything. But I went to this church, and when they called for communion, they came out, and one of our adjutant brothers came out, and the other man was helping him. I don't know whether he was an adjutant or not, but I don't think I want to tell you about the adjutants. One of our adjutant brothers came out. He had on some, you know, these clear plastic gloves, <laughs> and he took the bread and gave it to the person that was coming back, and then the other man gave them the, the juice. I was very impressed. In this age of, you know, when you go with this little pan with your little pellets in it and everybody puts a hand in it, by the time it gets to me, I just go right on around. <laughs> but I want you to know that we have an adjutant brother that has taken everything that we have taught in the adjutant and put it into practice. And I was just so, you know, my chest, my chest stood out. I, I love the edge because that's my first love, the edge. So I want you, it's, 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 that's his wife, it's a good child here. Thank you, Mom. Yeah, it was beautiful. You all would have been so proud of him. It was that good. Because we've got sometimes people come by and get their plate out and then they want to talk to the fellow that's holding the plate. <laughs> Change, Pastor, please change the 
way you're doing it because it's very unsanitary. They told us they were not going to sell it anymore. And you know, that's losing money for them. By the same token, if somebody could say, well, I got HIV or swine flu or something from the communion in the local church, and then the church that's sued. So we want to do this a different way. want you to just pretend that you gonna take communion mm -hmm. put your hand in here and get see he's touched one two three <laughs> <laughs> well he has he, and he was being very careful that the average person is not going to be they just going to come and get yeah. one uh -huh, they yeah, just come yeah we're not going to use this anymore this yes time. okay no <laughs> okay <laughs> but, <laughs> so then the way we're going to be doing it from now on, and there's a young preacher here. I forgot what his name is. That changed over to this after we did this at last year communion. Where are you? He must be gone, but he said he, he did it at his church now and how wonderful how much better it was because we don't want you to be sick just so you can get healed from this <laughs> what we're going to be doing is and when they prepare back there they have on the gloves they put the bread in the cup bread in the bottom of the first cup it's bread in the bottom of the cup then there's another cup it's going to be purple, like grape juice. They put it right here, and then they put, it, put the juice in here. Everybody see? Oh, yeah. I see. All right. better. Okay, this is what it is. The bread is in the bottom. The juice is in the top. What you do when they give you your communion, you take the juice out in your right hand, then you can put, you know, just take the, the bread over here, then you take the juice, and then we throw, dispose of all of this. Much better way, much more sanitary way. And it's not that costly, you just have to buy so extra glasses, that's all you do, you more glasses. But it's much better that you hand in everybody this plate and get the glasses. So you think, preachers, you think that's a good idea? Very good idea. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay, don't fill it up. No, we don't fill it, fill it up because we'll spill it. See, it's, it's, it's uh, Usually, you can go by the rim of the tray if you just fill it up right where you see the rim is. And then you won't have a problem with spilling. 